All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our Giardinelli mouthpiece right here. I just put my own mouthpiece protector on here like this. This company is known for making a lot of saxophone accessories, so saxophone stands, reeds, which I picked up also with this. Uh, mouthpiece protectors and a whole bunch of other stuff, but uh, it comes in a bag like this. And as you can see, it did not come with a cap or a ligature. But wait, it doesn't get a little sad, angry face because you can't actually buy a kit that comes with a mouthpiece and a cap. I did not get it because I have a whole bunch of mouthpieces and caps already. And this is made in the USA. Okay, now the mouthpiece is made in the USA. I don't know about the reeds or the saxophones or other products that they actually make. Okay, let's take a look at the inside of this thing and see what we got. All right, so this table seems really flat to me. These rails, they look a little thinner than what I would expect on a student model mouthpiece made of plastic. Let's get a look at the tip rail. Looks pretty even to me. Let's get a look at this baffle. Okay, just to the naked eye, it looks like there's just a fractional forehead right at the tip there. There's also a scratch that's there. But, okay. Um, these inside rails seem flat to me. Having a really hard time with it being this dark and having it focus in. But the, the inner uh, sidewall seem flat. Let's take a look at it from the back end because I want you guys to see this. You can see how circular that is. And yeah, there's a little moisture here because I've been playing this. But it looks very similar to my Selmer Session Soprano mouthpieces in that circular shape there. All right, so we have this rounded chin area, rounded window here, and I wanna take a look at the inside because you can see how far back that ramp shape goes. Usually you get like a wall where you get a ramp and it has some type of thickness to it, but this is like a really elevated ramp style on the inside. Okay, so here is what I think one of the most important attributes of this mouthpiece is that really gives it its distinct playability, and it has to do with this facing curve. I wish mouthpiece makers, you can see how it's kind of straight here and then right around here, then it just ramps up into this direction. I wish mouthpiece makers would go into more detail about the facing curves on all their mouthpieces, but I think that's really where the magic is happening with this mouthpiece. So with this thing, this is coming out to around a 70, 75, so it's like a four to a four star. Let's weigh this thing and measure it up and see what we got. 33.91, so this thing is coming in just shy of 34 grams, and it's coming in at about 106 millimeters. So here's my Autolink Supertone Master 7, and it's a little snug right around here. This one, yeah, it goes on there quite far. This one has a more open bore size than your standard Autolink. Okay, Giardinelli mouthpiece with Van Dorn Redbox uh, two and a half read. This is by far the best plastic mouthpiece I've ever played. Just in terms of its balance, ease of play, 
it does have a slight, slight stuffiness when I'm subtoning right down at the bottom, but only relative to other mouthpieces. But still, let's uh, let's do it. <laughs> This is like a 70 to a 75 tip opening. And I'm gonna talk later about the facing curve, but I normally never play uh, red box two and a half with tip openings like this. And this is a walk in the park. All right, let me, uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, Giardinelli mouthpiece with Giardinelli number three read. So with this reed and this mouthpiece, it does tend to get a little stiff in the lower register. But you know what? For $21, man, all, all it's really going to take is just me finding really a, a better reed, just getting more familiar with it. I mean, I think it's always going to be something of an issue. But man, it is fantastically easy. This, according to this measurement, don't quote me on this because I don't know, also couldn't find on the website what the actual tip opening for this is, but it's coming in around a 70 to a 75. So I'm going to estimate this is around a four to a four star. And now it makes perfect sense why those older guys were playing on such small tip opening mouthpieces. Because, I, I mean, man, this is a $21 mouthpiece with the reeds that this company makes and uh, I'm gonna, this is, this is definitely, definitely one of my favorite mouthpieces. Is it an elite mouthpiece? No, I mean, it's very generic still, but by far, man, just, I, I'm, I'm completely amazed. Like I was looking at some of their saxophones and I think there's some kind of partnership with Eastman to some degree on one of their upper uh, range saxophones, but this is a company you might want to seriously look into. And at worst, you're going to be out 21 bucks. But compared to all the other stuff that I've been reviewing, uh, this one is way up in my top tier now. And at $21, I mean, you guys have been asking me to do some less expensive stuff until you can get to where, you know, you've really been able to fine tune your sound to where you go, you know what, now it's time for me to move on from this kind of thing and step up. Now you have a fantastic platform, especially 
if you are a beginner, like I would highly recommend this over the Yamaha mouthpieces, except for two things. Number one, I have not been able to find any other tip openings for this mouthpiece. And I think that after putting a video like this together, they're probably gonna be very motivated to do so, or at least make it obvious that they offer more tip opening sizes. And it does get a little stuffy in the lower register, but as far as capability goes, man, this thing is on a whole nother level. So I don't know, maybe my measurement wasn't as accurate, but it definitely feels like a really good low tip opening mouthpiece. Um, on the other end, usually when there's a low tip opening mouthpiece, you can really do a lot with the facing curve. And I really do wish a lot of mouthpiece makers would do a whole lot to really give us a description of the facing curve. And I think that there's something really spectacular going on with this mouthpiece. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. I'm going to have a lot of fun playing on this thing over the next few months. So, see ya!